Yes, it's yet another wonderful time for us to share the Word of God. I am very delighted to be sharing the Word of God with you today. My name is Robert Mwando, and uh, I am just going to ask us to bow our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for yet another time uh, such as this for us to be sharing your word. I ask in the name of Jesus that the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth will be pleasing before you. Holy Spirit, come and lead through this sharing that our sharing today will be able to speak to our questions and to our concerns through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, thank you so much for joining us again. And uh, today I would like to share with us on the subject, the prophetic voice in times of crisis. I believe you agree with me that we are in times of unprecedented crisis world over. From natural disasters to man-made, as well as divinely orchestrated calamities. Governments are overwhelmed. The church's voice has been hushed and scientists still searching for answers. The Bible is full of examples of leaders, nations, and peoples in crisis. There are many examples we can draw from these biblical narratives. For example, we read of an era in the nation of Israel when the word of the Lord was rare and spiritual leadership was consumed with corruption, compromise, and in this deplorable atmosphere, Samuel learned to hear God's voice. There was also an era in the same nation when the supreme leader Saul was rejected by God. There was a looming crisis as far as the transition to a new leadership was concerned. Saul had been rejected by God, but he also rejected God's plan for remedy. In these situations, it is vital to guard our hearts, for they will surely be tested. A heart after God receives and extends mercy even to those who continually reject it. A heart after God discerns the anointing that remains upon a leader, even an unfaithful one, and responds in the fear of the Lord. David is a powerful example of this in his relationship with King Saul. Then there was the era when crisis hit from the top. David sinned. Unfortunately, even the purest of heart can stray. David did. In the spring of the year, the time when kings go forth to battle, the story is in 2 Samuel. King David was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He saw a woman that belonged to another man and desired her, committed adultery with her, and had her husband killed. The leader's personal crisis became a national crisis. And then God raised prophet Nathan to deal with this crisis. Although David had to deal with the consequences of his sin for the rest of his life, God was merciful to David. This would not have happened if Nathan had remained silent. The prophetic anointing was the gift that turned David's heart back to God so he could be restored. God has called and positioned some to be like Nathan. These people must carefully and respectfully speak directly to the, to the heart of the matter to bring about true repentance. In the New Testament, I am fascinated by Apostle Paul's shipwreck experience. In Acts chapter 27, we read about uh, Paul's voyage along with 276 others that became a major sailing crisis. 
And in this text, we have a representation of the political leadership represented by a centurion named Julius of the Augustan Regiment. We have slaves, we have prisoners, Paul being one of them, and we have the pilot of the ship representing the professionals or the so-called technical personnel. We also have the owner of the ship. He represents the business sector or the investors and the entrepreneurs. We have other sailors, people in various fields, also representing a majority on that ship. And then we have the prophetic voice represented here in this uh, text by Paul, who also represents the spiritual arena or the church of Christ. Now, in the current crisis, all these categories of people are well represented. The professionals, the scientists have put their opinions out there. The rich entrepreneurs, too, have also had their say. The government leaders seem to have no clue at this point. In the story, we read that the centurion did not listen to Paul. He listened to the pilot of the ship and also to the owner of the ship, who is the entrepreneur, and to the majority. We see that in Acts chapter 27, from verse 10 to verse 12. Apostle Paul tried to warn them, and he was not listened to the first time. But that did not silence the prophetic voice. In Acts 27, from verse 21 to 25, we again see he speaks out. After they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you should have spared your lives this damage and loss. But now I urge you to keep up your courage, because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. In verse 23, he says, Last night an angel of the Lord, to whom I belong and to whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Crises are sober reminders. The light of God's presence needs not to be extinguished in our hearts, even in the darkest times. Like Samuel, we can be sensitive to his voice, regardless of the corruption around us. Like David, our hearts can be filled with the fear and mercy of God, even for leaders who have gone astray. And like Nathan, God desires to work through us to restore leaders back to himself. Like Paul, despite being prisoner, the prophetic voice must not be hushed. The prophetic voice must be heard and heeded to in times of crisis. In times of peril, when the seas roar, we need the prophetic voice. It is the prophetic voice which will say, be of good cheer even in the storm. We see that in Acts chapter 27. And it's the prophetic voice which restores hope. The prophetic voice is what will guarantee your escape from the deep, like these men survived that great shipwreck. The prophetic voice is what preserves your life. The prophetic voice is what preserves your career, your family, and your children. The prophetic voice is what preserves a nation. Dear brothers and sisters, sacred scriptures give us many examples of how to respond during times of a leadership crisis. Among them being the stories of Samuel, David, Nathan, 
and Apostle Paul. In the current crisis, whatever cause, be it a global pandemic or economic downturn, family crisis, political crisis, name it, I pray that the prophetic voice will not be hushed. I pray that the prophetic voice will be heard. God bless you.